Hi, my name is Julia and I'm a homeschool mom of two. In this video, we will be taking a closer look at just three out of more than 600 math lessons available for Time for Learning middle schoolers. And now it's time for Math News Now! In this first lesson, we're taking a look at simplifying fractions. This is from the Fractions chapter in 6th grade math. Like most of the lessons, this one begins with a short introduction to the topic. Sally Newsworth! Thank you, Buster. Hello, I'm Sally Newsworth. Today we're going to go over simplifying fractions. We'll also be talking about how to show the remainder of a division problem as a fraction. Activities often give students the opportunity to go back through the instruction again if they need to, while giving those students that are ready to progress the option to move forward without additional instruction. All right, here's your chance to go through this part again if you missed anything. Otherwise, we can move on and see what's coming up next. Let's go back to High Tops, who will now give us the second method for simplifying fractions. Yeah, hey, you don't have to feel like the only way to simplify fractions is by using the greatest common factor, because it's not. You can use prime factorization, too. To simplify fractions with prime factorization, the first thing you need to do is list the prime factors of the numerator and the denominator. Let's skip ahead to the recap at the end of the lesson. Okay, so to sum up what we've gone over, we learned that there are different terms for simplifying fractions. And we discovered two methods you can use when simplifying a fraction. One method is to use the greatest common factor of the fractions. The conclusion summarizes and reinforces the information that was presented in the lesson. With prime factorization. Today we learned that a fraction represents a division problem. And we saw how to show the answer to a division problem as a fraction. Upon completion of a lesson, there is often a quiz available to the student. These are optional and may or may not be utilized according to your teaching style. Okay, I think that just about covers everything. Whenever you're ready to move on, just let me know. Let's move on to another middle school math lesson. In this lesson, 7th graders learn about the Pythagorean theorem. Given two sides of a right triangle, find the length of a third side. Here is a right triangle with sides that are 3, 4, and 5 units long. Pythagoras, a Greek mathematician who lived more than 3,000 years ago, noticed a very important property of right triangles when he drew squares on each side. This particular concept was a little tricky for my son at first. The activity breaks down the concept in a way that was easy for my son to understand. The area of the largest square. In this example, 9 plus 16 equals 25. What is the distance between points B and C? As a parent, one of the things I really appreciate about Time for Learning's math lessons is how feedback is given when answering questions or problems. Correct. The distance between points B and C can be found by solving the equation 16 squared plus B squared equals 34 squared. As extra practice, there is an optional independent practice activity that reinforces what students are learning, making sure they understand before moving on to the activity quiz. And now it's time to try some problems. In the right triangle shown, the lengths of the legs are 45 units and 60 units. How long is the hypotenuse? Let's go ahead and take a look at the final lesson featured in this video, which covers expressing numbers between 0 and 1 in scientific notation. Scientific notation is a way to write a number as a decimal number greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10, multiplied by a power of 10. This particular activity is one that I wanted to highlight because in addition to the practice problems in the instructional lesson, it has an Odyssey Writer activity, which incorporates more than just math. The Odyssey Writer activity encourages both internet and book research and writing in addition to the math skill. Okay, we've reviewed powers of 10 for place values to the left of the decimal point, but what about the powers of 10 for place values to the right of the decimal point? That is, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and so on. This concludes the middle school math demonstration. Please choose another subject, or if you'd like to learn more about how Time for Learning works, take a look at the tour video. Goodbye.